I start my actual speech, I want to warn you, it's kind of long. <laughs> you know, if you know anything about socialists, you know that we like to have long conversations. <laughs> but it's also, as Professor Noam Chomsky said, if you are running against a status quo, then you cannot speak in sound bites because you have to challenge what exists and present a vision what can be, and that takes time. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, this is a truly historic moment, and I wanted to begin by thanking everyone, which I am obviously going to do a very inadequate job of, because there are so many people to thank in so many ways that they helped us, in ways that we know of, and in ways that we will never know of, you know, that you, all the work you did silently, on your own, in your communities, and that is how activism is done. So thank you all so much. And I also wanted to thank all the media for being here, because this is a grassroots movement, and what a change it must make to cover a grassroots movement as opposed to business as usual. I wanted to thank all the speakers who came before me, who spoke so inspiringly, and to Sue Peters, who spoke uh, you know, by sending her, sending her message to us. I want to thank all the volunteers who worked on this campaign. And I wanted to just take a moment for you all to notice that, and if you haven't noticed already, how many amazing women there have been in this campaign. I mean, how inspiring is that? And I just wanted to mention a few names. I know I'm going to leave out many, many names, but I wanted to mention Nicole. You know, you saw how amazing she is. Sarah, Anne, Jess, Kelly, who's worked on the Minneapolis campaign, and many other women who've helped us and played a leading role. That, my brothers and sisters, is a vision for the future. This moment belongs to many, and I wanted to recognize some. This moment belongs to my union brotherhood, AFT, 1789. And all my fellow teachers who had the faith that this could be possible, all the other union and brothers and sisters who stood against the grain and were willing to show the courage to stand against the status quo and support what was then a long shot. And that takes courage. And I also wanted to thank the Stranger newspaper. <laughs> Who, whose editorial board has said very eloquently how they are not interested in endorsing and supporting candidates who are most likely to win, but they're interested in supporting the candidates who stand for the things they stand for, and that is what we need in politics. Yeah. This moment belongs to them all. This moment also belongs to the small business owners like Don Darrington there who made a donation, who I know works in medical marijuana. The, the one percenter who's the class trader. Give him an applause. And all the young people elderly, disabled, people of color, immigrants, everybody who worked on this campaign, this moment belongs to you all. This moment also belongs to the fast food workers 
who have courageously walked out on one-day strikes. It belongs to the workers and the labor movement that worked to help make the SeaTac initiative successful. Let's give a round of applause for them. This moment also belongs to the anti-foreclosure activists and SAFE and to the Occupy Homes Minneapolis campaign. It belongs to the students at Divest UW who not only endorsed our campaign, but are doing amazing pioneering work in standing up for the fight against climate change. And I especially wanted to recognize my socialist alternative brother, Ty Moore, in Minneapolis, and everybody who worked hard on his amazing campaign. <laughs> this moment also belongs to all of the working class everywhere in the US and in the entire world. As Geo of Luke Scholar said, it's the heralding of the new everywhere. It's not just Seattle. We have shown that it's possible to succeed as an independent, grassroots, openly socialist campaign, not taking any money from big business, not currying favor with the establishment parties of big business, having an unapologetic campaign platform for improving the living standards of Seattle's working people and rejecting the business as usual. This, this moment belongs to that way of organizing. Yeah. This is an enormous achievement. It is a political earthquake and that's not an exaggeration by any means. And we should, we should, we absolutely should savor and celebrate this moment because we have worked so hard and so long for this. And this moment has to be celebrated because it is, as we have often said, going to go down in history books as a proud moment for human solidarity. You, my brothers and sisters, are going to be in the history books. <laughs> but it's also my job to inject a note of necessary thoughtfulness and being sober and to remind everyone let us not get carried away when in this frenzy of media attention and glory. Let us not make the mistake of thinking that our work is done. Our work is not done. Your work is not done. Voting for me to be in City Hall was only the first step. We have a long journey to undertake. And other politicians have expressed their support for $15 an hour. And as I've said before, we welcome that. And we should also draw the correct political lessons from this election year. It was precisely because of the grassroots efforts through our campaign, the fast food workers movement, and the SeaTac initiative that $15 an hour has become a buzzword. We did it, not the corporate politicians. People have asked me, don't you think that sounds like gloating, you know, to always point out that we came here first? And I wanted to share with you why we bring this up. It is not about gloating. It is about remembering that never should we have illusions in the establishment. Our power lies in our hands, and we make the change happen, just like we did this year.
And we will need to keep up the pressure if $15 an hour is to see the light of day in 2014. The struggle is only now beginning. Big business and the political establishment has been arrogant and unchallenged for long, and they did not see this campaign coming by a long shot. <laughs> but now they have seen what is possible through grassroots power. They are not going to be asleep anymore. We have vowed to fight for $15 an hour in 2014 and for the broader interests of working people. There is a huge grassroots support for this demand. Our campaign, as much as anything else, has been a public referendum, an evidence of how much support there is for $15 an hour in Seattle. And the reality is that big business, even though they are going to hate the idea of $15 an hour, they cannot change the fact that people are now in huge numbers supporting this demand. So it is going to be hard for big business to do a sort of a frontal attack on our demand. What they are going to do is use other means. They are going to make a ferocious effort, make no mistake, to marginalize me and sow divisions and confusion amongst us. They will use slander against me. They will make this whole discussion about me, my personality, every word I uttered, and they will use it not just to undermine me, but to undermine our movement. This is what this is about. And so we have to understand not to have illusions in them. Look at how viciously the corporate media has attacked Boeing workers for having the temerity to reject the attacks on their pensions and health care. We will have to be strong. You will have to be strong. You will have to learn that you cannot believe the attacks they will make against our movement. And you will have to understand that we have the power, but we have to keep building. And they will use other means. They will try to bog it down in endless delays, studies, and reviews. They will endlessly tell you this myth that we need to have a reasonable discussion with big business. Think about how absurd this sounds. Having a reasonable discussion with the CEO of McDonald's, the CEO of Subway, the CEO of all these corporations who have shown where their interest lies. And I ask you, if big business was going to be reasonable, then why have they fired Carlos? Why did they not rehire him? Why are they punishing the workers who fight for their interests? And if none of that works, they will try to pass something that sounds like happy talk, but will be a watered down and diluted version of what we actually want. So we need your help to build this movement for $15 an hour. I am going to do my part. I have already made the promise that we will draft an ordinance for $15 an hour to be passed in 2014. We will simul simultaneously start the work on drafting an initiative. I am appealing to the labor movement, to the civil rights leaders, to other organizers and activists to sit down with me so that we can work on this together. But I need some promises from you also. I need you to commit today, right now, this second, commit to building a coalition for the rally for 10,000 in early next year. Let's build this rally starting today. Before you leave today, make a commitment to yourself and then share it with us. We have all, you know, people in the $15 t-shirts, they are the ones you should talk to. Make a commitment that you will lead up and organize a neighborhood action group for $15 an hour. If you are a student, make a commitment that you will organize and lead up a campus action group for $15 an hour. We will help you along the way. 
but you have to take the initiative. We need a powerful network of these action groups to counter what will be the onslaught from big business. And we need to start the work now. We, are, we need to be in solidarity with the metro workers. Metro is facing an imminent and devastating cut that we have to fight against. We also have to join the rally in solidarity with Boeing workers. Boeing, after having extracted tens of billions of dollars in handouts over the last several decades, is once again carrying out a massive highway robbery, holding the Boeing workers and the state hostage to their endless greed. They, they produce uh, you know, machines and equipment primarily for military contracts, but who actually runs Boeing? Boeing executives make their profits because they have a whole fleet of workers who with their talent, hard work, and ingenuity make that production happen. But the CEOs and the executives do not even blink an eye before they sell those very same workers out yet again. And we salute the Boeing workers for not accepting that agenda. And the state legislature has capitulated once again. We are in dire need of funds for mass transit, for education, for universal preschool. We need funds to improve our standards of living. And what does the state legislature do? Gives yet another handout of $8 billion to Boeing executives. The Democratic governor has led this charge. The Democratic majority house is complicit in this, and we have a strong Democratic caucus in the Senate. And yet, yet, most of these uh, elected officials have overwhelming majority voted to give this outrageous handout. What does this tell us? This tells us that we need an alternative to the two big business parties. executives insist on relocating the factories out of Washington, that will be destructive not only to the Boeing workers, but to workers everywhere in the state, and indeed the economy of the entire state. And if they insisted on doing this, that would be nothing short of economic terrorism. And if they insist, the only response we can have to reject this blackmail is to tell the CEOs, if you want to go, you can go. The machines are here. The workers are here. Let us take this uh, entire productive activity into democratic public ownership and retool the machines to produce mass transit. against this big business agenda. We need to fight on behalf of the Boeing workers. We need to fight on behalf of Metro workers. We need to fight for $15 an hour. But that is not going to be enough. We are fighting against the system of capitalism itself. And look how spectacularly it has failed in meeting even the most basic needs of human survival. Look at the ever-expanding problems of poverty, inequality, homelessness, and the lack of access to basic social services, not to mention the impending cloud of climate change. 
It will not be enough to fight for these reforms. We need to fight against a system that breeds these problems, and we need an alternative. And we believe the alternative is democratic socialism. The system as we have now, the capitalist system, serves the 1% and puts the planet in peril. We need a sustainable, global sustainable system that will deliver a high quality standard of living for everybody on the planet in a sustainable way. And our campaign has shown that it is possible to start building the socialist movement. And if you want to build, if you want to be part of building this ongoing movement for socialism and against capitalism, I appeal to you to join Socialist Alternative and to join us in this effort in human transformation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Sawant. So um, I think Shama made it clear that now is the time to act, and we have uh, something planned for you this evening. So what we're going to do is get out into breakout, get, break out into breakout groups. Um, we know that this campaign was won by grassroots action, and that has to continue if we want to win uh, the fight for $15 an hour in 2014. So we're going to um, break out. Uh, you'll see there'll be people around the room if you can raise your hand in the red shirts. These are gonna be the people that you should go to when we finish here to talk to, to, talk to them about what we're going to do in terms of going out tonight uh, to make sure all of the votes for Shama and for $15 an hour are counted and to begin building a base for the movement that that's, it's going to take to win the things we're demanding. Um, after we go out, we'll come back here around 7.30 for uh, pizza and time to talk more about uh, the things that we're wanting as we go forward. So before I let you go, I'm going to ask you all to stand up. And we're going to chant to get the energy going to go out and do this work. So when I say vote, you say vote. 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 When I say rent, you say control. rent. Control. Rent. Control. Rent. Control. Rent. Control. And when I say living, you say Wage. living. Wage. Living. Wage. Living. Wage. All right, go get it. And now we have a special treat. We're going to hear from Gio of the Blue Scholars. What's up, New Seattle? <laughs> New Seattle in the building. It is a pleasure to be here. It is an honor to be here, to be part of history. And uh, just came from, from down south, and the energy, there, the energy here is probably like 10 times what it is down there. <laughs> so um, my name is Gio. For those that don't know, I also go by the name of Prometheus Brown. And uh, yeah, congratulations, Seattle. Chama, thank you all for having me. I'm going to do a, a couple pieces um, from the future. <laughs> Picture my DeLorean gray riding away. I just wanted to say, I'll be back in a day. So peace, I'm going back in a day, back to change what has mattered of late. I know the battle's begun, but I'm not trying to hit on my moms. No, McFly, I'm riding on plutonium, overdrive, south side, Chicago 69, find a cat who snitched Fred to the FBI, put a couple in his head and flee back to my ride, give guns to the KKK. Nah, not talking about them rednecks neither. My blood and my people. 
1896, beat that bitter defeat. I made copies of the tapes that I lost in the town. Take a picture of Jesus and show that he's brown. Watch an MJ concert when Thriller was new and hit Manila for the Spaniard fools that came through. I say hi to that little dude, whisper in his ear. One day, he gonna make this music his career, so he better start now, cause here in 20 years, these kids will wanna hear something new every year. Whatever year I appear, I'ma steer this car to the edge, then veer to the left, but we can't change things. But we can't change reverse the flood, take back the things that were written in blood, and so we come back to the now, cause there's no turning back around. So we go into the future instead to find out how to clean up the mess before it gets too out of our hands to see it ever get clean again. Better yet, bring a pen and keep on writing so we never see the end. But the path that we writing make the past look calm. The present look like ain't nothing ever wrong. But dog, I swear to God, if you seen what I saw, you might not believe in God after all. But beyond that was a place where the walls come down and the kids see the world in their palm. Rich people gone. Poor Poor people gone. Everybody riding on a hoverboard home. Ain't nobody starving in a former war zone. And every false image of God erased. Everybody leaving nothing to waste. Third world people reclaiming their first place. And the president actually do what the president say. A new precedent the president can taste. First, we got to figure out a way to bring about the change. Because between then and now was a bittersweet war that began right now as I speak through a song. We got to link arms with arms to feel strong and aim it up at everything we want to see gone. Bail out the folks that be needing the most and not the blood suckers feeding while we bleeding along. Plus, you got to be original to put out your songs. No program, radio, time, a Viacom, and in spite of all, that we might have been a pall back. Holla to the bourgeois, tell y'all to fall back. Whatever year I appear, I'ma steer this car to the edge, then veer to the left. But we can't get ahead of ourselves and not work. We gotta put our time in first. So, we're coming back to the now. Cause we gotta get past somehow. And now you can't change and reverse that flood and take back the things that were written in blood. And so we're coming back to the now because we got to get past somehow. Thank you. Woo!